Welcome back to Road of Abundance. Today, I have a special guest and a good friend of mine. It's Ken Rukowski. I met him in Dubai, and it was so funny because, um, you know, how I love to attract things. I love to manifest abundance. So I manifested Ken in my life. He's going to tell you who he is. And um, I was looking for more people to align with in business and friendship, people that share the same value as me. So Ken, can you introduce yourself? Mike, I appreciate being here. Uh, okay, so if I'm going to introduce myself in third person, which makes it a lot easier, uh, I invented the podcast in the 90s. So not the same podcast you're listening to today, but the technology that's gone into the podcast. I was the first ever stream on the internet. But what I do today is I do basically three things. Uh, I help governments put on big, massive events. Do, I do a few in Dubai that I have over 100,000 people that attend. Uh, number two, I help people become, I call them 10Xing. I help them find a 10X in their business. So if they're making a million, I help them make 10 million. And that's all three relationships and contacts and knowing the right people. And last is I created a men's group that makes better husbands, fathers, brothers, <laughs> and partners by finding heart-centered men from around the world to make them more accountable to one another. Well, that, that's amazing. And that's exactly uh, when I say I manifested you in my life is because I was in Los Angeles. I had a group of friends that were good friends, amazing people, but a lot of influencer and a lot of people that were stuck a little bit into that circle of influencer stuff. And I was like, I want more people that or business. I want more people that talks about different stuff. And, and LA is a lot of social media. So when I met you, you were like, yo, Mike, I think you would be good for metal. And I was like, what's metal? So what, what's metal? What, what do you do? <laughs> All right. So I'm kind of like you, I moved to Los Angeles uh, from San Francisco, right when the first dot com bubble bursted. Okay. So around 2000. And I got, a, I got kind of caught up in the the whole space of meeting a lot of imposters or posers, or I like to refer to them as $30,000 millionaires, people that claim to have all the money, all the contacts and everything. And you find out later on, they have nothing and they siphon everything out of you. And I realized that I'm not going to meet the right people unless I created the right parameters for meeting that. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things that men need, men are like dogs, period. We're like dogs. We got to be trained. <laughs> Well, we are, right? Come on. What's your favorite animal? We're, I love it. I have two Frenchie. <laughs> <laughs> a dog. <laughs> and the, what, what, what I mean by that is men need consistent, predictable schedules. So what I did is I started a breakfast club in the early 2000s where I made sure we were always together, made sure it was really easy. And that little breakfast club turned out to be from three people to six and then 10, then eventually two to three to four to 500 people Every single Saturday would get together and I would create specific topics and agendas. I would stay away from politics and religion. Mm -hmm. And that's a tough thing to do in California because everything is so charged in the political <laughs> space. Yeah. And I made it so everybody was the same. So whoever you were, no matter what level you've achieved, you were all equal. Yeah. So, and that's an important thing. So I do this thing called speed to cool. You've never got to see this, unfortunately, because you've never been to the live events in Los Angeles. And what speed to cool means is who are you? What do you do? And what makes you cool? Now, cool is uniqueness. C cool is not, you know, I got double PhDs. That's amazing. That's great. But cool is like, you know, I, um, I was kidnapped when I was a kid and I, I found a way to get out of that. Or, you know, I made my first million by accidentally finding this, this, uh, this fossil or something cool is where we all go, wow, right? <laughs> and the key is how fast you get to cool. So what I would do every Saturday, everybody that's new and generally it's like 15 to 20 new guys would stand up on stage and they had to say what their speed to cool is. And it's kind of like a hazing process. And these guys are nervous. I mean, they might be masters and captains in their industries, but they're scared to death of becoming vulnerable. And let me give you one example. So I had Lou Ferrigno. Do you know who Lou Ferrigno is? Yeah. Isn't he the bodybuilder? Like uh... Bodybuilder, uh, him in, uh, I mean, you will oh, know no, him. Yeah. I'll yeah, tell yeah. you why you'll really know him. Okay. He was in Pumping Iron. He, uh, you know, massive bodybuilder. I mean, he really started Venice Beach with Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? So he gets up on stage 
And he starts talking about things that are interesting, like him and his son run the bodybuilding events, uh, him and his son do this. And all of it was interesting, but he neglected the coolest thing most of us know him for. He was the original Hulk. Oh, for him? He was the original Hulk, right? Look how you just acted like, he forgot about that. And all of a sudden when he said, you know, I was the original Hulk, everyone was, yeah. And then he could, he could leave the stage and he almost felt like, yes, I did it. So my goal is how do we get this, this supercharged thing that sits inside us guys to come out? And the key about that is it shows that we all have something amazing inside us. And my goal is to make sure, because you probably know this, Mike, the, the fourth biggest killer of men in North America is suicide because of depression. I, I, I heard that it was, it was becoming more and more because uh, especially with men toxicity that men's are supposed to be strong. Men's don't cry. Men's don't talk about their feeling. Men's this, men that. It's like guys just going to go through a depression, consume alcohol, consume sex, and then not talk about feeling or anything. And nobody's helping them because they have to be the strong figure. Yeah. Well, I, I want guys to become accountable to their emotions and that's, that's the whole direction. So if there's women watching this, understand it's not that I don't like women. I love women, but you need to have a strong man that's there to create security and have great communication. And it's been very difficult for guys these days to have both. And it really has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I feel you. And and it's related to what I teach in terms of abundance, spirituality, it's like reconnecting with femininity and masculinity, but the right way, not like, oh, I'm a man, I'm all tough and this and that. Yes, that's true. But like you said, it's like, don't be scared to be vulnerable, like to show your emotion, to have communication that makes you a better man. I think that if we look at <laughs> men today, we, we need to look at this, this pyramid of self. And I've really tried to crystallize this idea. So I want you to think about the top of a pyramid, the very top. Okay. This is the most important part. And that is a bit of Maslow or something like that. Like the need. No, it's not Maslow's pyramid. It's not Maslow's. No, no. So the very, this is, this is Ken Rakowski's pyramid. This is what (laughs) I, after, you know, coaching thousands and thousands of men, I've seen some consistencies. Okay. At the very top of the pyramid, we need to take care of our mental and emotional health, mental, mental and emotional. So that's the very, very top. So if you're, you're screwed up right now, you got to find help. You got to make sure that you're going to a process to get better f- mentally healthy and emotionally healthy. Okay. So the next level is physical health. Exactly what you teach, you know, eat right, exercise, be in good shape. Don't say you're weak. Make sure you're, you're strong. So you have that f- mental, emotional, physical. Okay. That's the top. Mm-hmm. The next is career, career. And the reason why is I'm going to go to the bottom two and the bottom two really will have a problem. If your career is messed up, if you're always trying to chase money, (laughs) if you're always, you know, you're, you're broke because your job doesn't work. You've got to make sure that career is sound, consistent, because it gives, unfortunately, men a purpose that career for most men is purpose driven. The next level is family. Now, if you have no kids, that's your parents, your siblings. You need to make sure you're taking care of all of those other people that are out there. And then on the bottom is your significant other. See, most of the time, guys say, oh, I'm going to take my significant other. I'm going to put them on top. You can't do that. You got to be mentally healthy, emotionally healthy, physically healthy, have a job and take care of your kids. Because if any, if none of those are working, your significant other is not going to fit in your life properly. Most guys mess it all up. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, they, they, they're they not complete and they're not whole and they try to f- fill a void with having someone and then they put them on top and it becomes a priority. But like you said, at first, they didn't really take care of themselves first. And you can't love nobody if you don't love yourself. And that's that's exactly why I created the, the Road to Abundance, this podcast, the university that I'm teaching, because I was seeing that no matter how people are in shape, at, even at the best shape of my life, when I, I thought I was in the best shape at 24, I was the most mentally fuck you could get, like toxic relationship, uh, sleeping uh, with girls, like every everything was bad in my life. And I was chasing money instead of attracting it. And like you said, I was trying to put my girlfriend on top of everything and it was just messing everything around. It's crazy because everyone says, oh, no, no, you got to put the relationship first. No, because if you don't have the foundation, 
<clears throat> that relationship is just not going to work. And unfortunately, you're going to suck the life out of it because you're not getting life out of the top parts. Yeah. So, yeah. and what, what's nice is I'm in a really healthy relationship right now. <laughs> and the partner I'm with knows that pyramid, understands it. Yeah. So, and by the way, she has her own pyramid too, right? She, she mm -hmm. realizes that she has to make sure those things are taken care of. It's not always perfect. But boy, guys, if, if you want to be in a really good place, make sure your, your mental and emotional health is sound because that really is the rock yeah. of you moving forward. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and like you said, you've seen people from every income bracket, from rich to Everyone. billionaire to millionaire to whatever. You, if you don't fix this, that's why I decided instead of teaching money or any other thing, I decided to go and teach the three pillar, which is for me, mind, soul, and body health and, and be like, Guys, you need to be balanced because even if you have money, you're going to be miserable if you don't do the things like you said, you don't take care of yourself. Even if you have the best shape, what is it going to give you if mentally you're not there? I, I was in great shape. I did <laughs> when I was young. <laughs> here's a little funny thing. So I, I, I studied in the seminary initially. I was going to be a priest. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to be, a, I was, I was in the seminary for two years to become a Jesuit priest. And then I dropped out and then I became a Chippendale dancer. I was a stripper in, in the late eighties. <laughs> I know That's it's crazy. Awesome. Chippendale and is I, funny. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I was the only straight one of the whole group. So it's, it's, it's crazy. By the way, um, you're probably not old enough to know the song. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Relax, relax. Don't do that was what's called. My oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Song. I, know, I know this song. Yeah. So that song is where I would go to get my tips. Right. And there was a group of bachelorettes in the corner, it seemed like, and they were going crazy. And that song's going crazy. And I go to the corner and there's a $20 bill about to go on my G string. And then I hear Ken. And I look down and it's my mom. <laughs> my, my mom is at the at Chippendale. And she goes, this is the last time you're ever stripping. I go, yes, mom. So my mom actually caught me and kicked me out of stripping when I was young. But what was interesting was I was in the probably some of the best shape ever. But I was miserable, right? Yeah. I was miserable because I was I was doing the wrong things. I was doing steroids back then. I was doing uh, testosterone. I was young injections, and it was horrible. So I may have had a great body, but man, my <coughs> top part of my pyramid, yeah. emotional and, and and mental health, was certainly not there. Yeah, and 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 it's 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 a, it's the same. It's a spiral, and then some people will go down and 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 go with addiction like either sex food or whatever and it, it's like a self-destruction so you have to take care of it so mike how do you make sure you are not overdoing something like you just mentioned it as addictions you know a food food's a big one i see a lot of people that are depressed they eat, eat. how can somebody know when they're overcompensating something to take care of an emotional thing they haven't dealt with yet Um, that's that a good question. What I'm saying. Yeah, I would say that as a being in the health industry for so long and seeing people like you have to eat a certain amount, but if you're always craving, so it's more like, okay, I just ate the meal, but I feel like I'm craving more food and more food, or you feel like there's, it's never enough. It's, it's more like, I would say that you have the feeling that's for anything. Like you just add sex with a girl but you want more. You always want more. You're chasing the next girl. And even if you would have a girl every day, there's the next girl. It's kind of like that with food, with every addiction. It's, it's like, if it's a never ending hole, it's like always chasing the next thing. So when I feel like, let's say today, um, I didn't consume sugar for, for a few days and then I ate a nice meal. And then I was like, I'm hungry. I'm craving. And then, and then your brain is going to tell you chips, food, this. And then I'm like, I'm not hungry technically my signal for sugar is popping to the roof. So if you fight it, if you do something else, if you keep yourself busy, if you like, it's, it's like any addiction. If you change the mindset, you can meditate, you can do whatever makes you feel good, helps you to do so. Uh, it could re be reading a book, whatever, but it's just fighting this. So here's and my challenge. My challenge with you is this. So my my career most of my life is a talk show host. Okay. I started in radio in the nineties mm -hmm. and I, 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 I still do it. So my consistent fallback is to interview people. I generally am never interviewed. Okay. 
So that's why I'm starting to turn around going, all right, I'm going to ask Mike this question. So don't, if, if unless you want that to happen, you're going to have no, to make I sure. I, you, I, will, okay. I will make sure I control it. But yeah, I didn't mind you asking me a question. But yes, my question to you, um, to come back on your side is, you started podcasts back in the day. Now, how did you become so successful and what made you successful? And you've seen it, let's say almost seen it all. You've interviewed so many people. Like, tell me what made Ken successful, what you learned and what, if you were to do it again today, what would be the intake? And then you can also tell me what those people like. Um, sure, gave you. sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've interviewed about 25,000 people and I've found certain patterns that are consistent amongst the highly successful individuals. But the secret to almost anyone's success is the surroundings they're in. So we, we like you said, you manifested our relationship. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a relationship that was either unhealthy to know what you didn't want, or you saw other healthy relationships to know what you wanted. So you need to make sure you're hanging out the right people. This is so important. Friends really dictate where you're going to go. Everyone would say, hey, how can I show me someone successful? I go, great, let me see their friends. Because that really, de really determines where someone's going to go. So when I was young, I hung out with a lot of people that inspired me to move forward and go beyond where I was at. Very, very young. When I was in my teens, I was always hanging out with people in their 20s and 30s because they fascinated me as opposed to people my age. So that, that's the first. Next is I'm always absorbing knowledge. I, you know, uh, my, my, my partner and I, my fiance and I, we were just sitting here having lunch and we put on a few YouTube videos of educational stuff. I mean, we're doing documentaries, yeah. we're sucking stuff in like that. We're not here binge watching. You know, we, we want to do that. And that's part of one of the formulas. And the other thing is, I always dreamt big, but possible. So too many people say, oh, I can't wait to be a millionaire. I'm going to dream of billion, being a millionaire. Well, do you know what it's like to have $100,000? I mean, a millionaire might sound like, yeah, that's amazing, but you may not be able to handle that. So I dreamt being what's possible and I learned sequences to do this. And probably the last and most important is I handled losing well because we're gonna lose. Uh, and, and sometimes I've lost big where you lose everything like you would in poker, but you know the game isn't over. And that's the key because too many people when they lose, they go, I'm done, that's it, I give up. You can never give up after losing big. You got to turn it around and move forward. How many times have you hurt yourself and you really messed yourself up working out? <laughs> yeah. Right? I, Am I right? I, I did. And and I did also with businesses. I went bankrupt. I did. There's there's if there's no risk, there's no reward. And 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 you're totally right. You have to keep going and, and not stay in those trauma. Well, I think what happens is you and I are astronauts. Let me explain that. Most people are astronomers. They sit back and they look at the stars through a telescope and they, they wonder what it's like to be there. They're in a very safe place. Astronauts, they risk everything to get there and it's hard, but they experience that, right? So being an astronaut is really difficult, but it has the biggest upside is being the astronaut. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, you know, the astronomers, what most of the world is. And I, I, I mean, I admire astronomers. That's great. But man, I always want to be an astronaut. Yeah, like being the action and, and, and just doing stuff. And that's, that's where the life happened. Like you have one life, you got to make it something like that's for yeah. sure. And You're right. like nowadays, like you have habits. So you're eating good, you're, you're training, you're well, like, wait, you're let's, let's, let's now. Yes. But during the dot com days, I was probably about 50 pounds heavier than I am now. Um, because I, 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 maybe, maybe when you're young, you become highly focused on one thing and you neglect other things. Like my place was probably really dirty. I had bad dietary. I wasn't working out because I wanted to build this one company. You know, I, I'm probably not the best at multitasking. So yeah, back in the days I was now I'm balanced. I know what everything is in a habit forming pattern. So back to being dogs, I need patterns. I need consistent. Like if I don't work out, I, I start getting upset with myself and down. So working out isn't about pumping iron. It's about, that's my time to make sure I'm taking care of my body. 
right? Um, money is very interesting because money is not what brings happiness in. And I think many people equate, oh, I got to make a lot of money to be happy. And it's the other way around. Be happy so you can enjoy the money when you get it. And I've learned yeah. that as age, right? I, I'm not sure if you've gone through that too. You think money's going to fix everything? Yeah. It probably will, but not your emotional <laughs> side. Yeah. I mean, like, like anybody says, like you would choose rich over broke any day, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that if you can't be happy without money, you're not going to be happy with money. And totally that's right. where I went to my spiritual like path and journey and stuff, because I went from bankrupt, like I was making decent money. I went bankrupt and then I started making six figure and I was like, okay, I got the Mercedes. I got a nice apartment in the brand new fancy tower. I got five days a week to the restaurant. I'm like, so what's next? Better car, better penthouse, more restaurant. I'm already doing it. I'm already traveling the world, but I was still like empty inside. So I was like, okay, so what's next? And then I was like, fuck, this is not what I want to do. And, and I was in making even a million. I was making, I think 150 K back then. And I was like, fuck, I only see that doubling my income will double my material possession. But I was like, what's next? So I so what'd you do? Really, um, I went into a very long journey inside of myself, meditation, reading. I left for Bali. Um, like now I tell people, I'm going to skip you the six months traveling, the going everywhere. Now I found the way to do it. And that's what I put in the RTA in the Road to Abundance University. It's everything is deep inside of you. And it's just small action, like you said, the right habits. So doing the right things consistently is going to make you happy. And often we create the past, uh, we create the future from the past or we repeat actions that are not necessarily making us happy. And we think that the future is going to change. But if you don't, the, the future is not going to be different. So by creating a different present moment, it will alter the future based on that new present. I agree with everything you just said. You're right. By the way, I do like to live somewhere else. I, I think it makes me happy Yeah. because uh, I mean, I, I, you and I lived uh, in Bali for a while yeah. and, I, and I think that's where I want to spend most of my life. And it's not because <laughs> it's cheap. It's not because that it's because there's a different way of living compared mm -hmm. to stateside. Um, and I think there's a respect for life. That's a yeah. little different too. And I, and it's yeah. not, it's not something that I create. It's the environment creates. And I think you've experienced that, right? People. Yeah. 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 Totally. Love like each other. Differently. I, I would say that traveling is probably the best expense investment that you can do in yourself. And it did really change my life in terms of, I saw things that when, I don't know, people have the American dream. Don't get me wrong. America is nice. This and that. I don't think it's the best place to live on the planet. I, I, I agree. really, I really don't think I, I've I agree a lot of places and yes there's nice people here yes canada is nice but i felt my best self in bali did oh did you really yeah like 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 yeah and i think in the next two years i was thinking of maybe moving to europe for a little while so i can travel around and then um I'll rotate between bali and there um the thing is i like traveling so for me it's i just love it um what I can say is when I was unhappy, I was still feeling unhappy in Bali, no matter how great it was. That's why I say that you have to be happy first to enjoy what you see. And now that you're older, you enjoy Bali because you know the value of it. Yeah, that was it. And I also like the lifestyle. Let's face it, getting on a scooter and I it, love it just... <laughs> It was one of my favorite things, right? I, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, and everything was close. It was a different, you know what? Let's do this, Mike. Let's create a base in Bali and then I'm jump down. everywhere else from there. Yeah, I, I'm down. Right? I, was, I was just talking to a friend. Um, she's updating me on the Doug status and stuff because it's really like complicated Hard. to bring Doug. So I have to bring the Frenchie now. And uh, um, when I got the Frenchie, actually, I was in a place in my life it was funny because a uh, quick story that, that a lot of people could relate is you remember I told you, you see what you're sabotaging yourself with, right? My escape because I had money, time and freedom was traveling. So I was like, every time I was feeling something, I was booking a flight next day. 
When I decided to move to Bali, I did it in one week. I dropped my apartment, sold everything, and I left. I bounced. So I got too dug, and I was like, Mike, you know what? Now you're going to be forced to stay where the fuck you are and live with yourself for the next two years. And it was at the <laughs> beginning of like um, the disease. So I was like, you know what? I might not be traveling as much. Let's get dog. And now it's now it's just harder to travel because now I can't bounce. It's, it's I have more preparation to do, but it did help me to stay at one place, become happy. And now I just can't wait to travel the world again with this new this new me. You know what I mean? And and, and I, I get it. To go back. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well. I think the places I've enjoyed. So in, during the pandemic or the diseases, you call it, um, we didn't let lockdowns shut us down. I mean, we jumped, we went to so many countries. One of the guys in our metal group, he went to 40 countries during COVID. <laughs> it was so 40 cheap, countries. cheap to travel. No, but you met him. Remember we went and saw Dune with him. He was one of the guys. Oh Remember yeah. The we saw Dune? Los Leblanc. Uh, no, no, that, not Christian, but Christian's a great guy. Christian's in Bali. His videos are amazing. Lost LeBlanc. No, it was David, the flight attendant, kind of large guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, him? I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a flight attendant. He's worth a fortune and he's a flight attendant just because he wants to travel. But I love Jordan and Turkey. Those are really cool places. But yeah, hey, I, let, let's let before we do ADD, I do want to go back to something you asked and of all these people I interviewed and the similarities of highly yeah. function, just high performance people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they had secret. five, they had five traits, every one of them that yeah. I interviewed from Elon Musk to Oprah to Jim Carrey, every one of them had these five traits. Okay. The first thing was every one of them had a morning and evening routine. So in the morning, I, wait, they I stop you there. Tell me yours. Everybody had a morning routine. I want to, I want to hear what, what's yours. My, my favorite. Well, okay. You know what? Unfortunately, I I've been cheating lately, but what I would like to do in the morning is my first thing is I don't want to go to electronics. I do not want to go right away to my phone. I want to hold my girl. I want to hold my girl and just uh, be grateful and have gratitude that I'm with her. Right. That's and then amazing. the second thing is what I, what I do is I have a tea collection. I go down and I pick a tea for the day, and the tea is my start point. And I really love my tea. And then from there, I look at my to-do list. My night is a gratitude journal, right? Awesome. And uh, my night is what is tomorrow going to be. But everyone had a morning and evening routine. Everyone, what do you have the same thing? Yeah, so now I would say that the only thing I'm missing from my morning routine, which I really, really want to get back, and I, uh, is the cold bath. I don't have a bath, unfortunately, um, in this apartment. So I used to do cold like, bath. You like a cold plunge. Yeah, like the thing is on the balcony because I'm in an apartment, it was not possible right now, but I can't wait to get back to cold bath. So I do meditation, reading a book in the morning. I don't touch electronic for the first hour. Like I, like the first thing I just check if there was an emergency, I click, okay, nobody like, there's no 20 call miss or anything. I don't check my text. I just text. If, if I have 10 text misses from someone, I know there's something, but first thing as I do that, then I do the meditation, then I do the, like, I'm just being in a grateful pattern. Now I, I just finished a book of Wim Hof. So I integrated his breathing um, before the meditation. And at night, I need to get better at it. I want to do uh, the gratitude journal. I've never been good at being like everything, everything that's secretary, but my girl is really good at it. So she's pushing me to do it. And it's missing. I think, my... you, I think you should interview my girl around this because this is yeah. part of the personal branding side of things and the self-confidence and she's world-class and journaling is very, very important. Okay. So the first thing is people had a morning and evening routine. Mm -hmm. Number two they were able to push off gratification. So delayed gratification. Yeah. Knowing I don't need that right now. You know, <laughs> I could push it off a year because I think many people take that whole, that attitude. Oh, I want that croissant. I want that croissant right now. Right. Yeah. I want that chocolate cake or I want to buy that car. Knowing if you push it off further, they could get something better or yeah. they didn't really need it at that point in time. This is one reason why credit card debt is so high, right? They're instantaneous gratification. They yeah, delayed and, gratification. And, and it's funny you said like men's or dog and like, like we were joking around that because dogs are very 
rewarded to our instant gratification. They want sex, they um, they want food, they this, this, this. And that's how we are kind of programmed. So with social media, I learned to wait to get followers in order to get money. I did it for four years for no money. And it, it kind of taught me some stuff. And coming from a gamer background where every day it's a new level, new gear, new, I, I was like so addicted to this. So I had to teach myself. And like you said, for everything in life, it's all about, okay, I'm not going to eat the cake. I'm not going to do this because of what I want this amazing mental health, physical health, this and that. So yeah, um, people have to learn to, to just wait for the reward. Okay. So we had morning and evening routines. We have delayed gratification. Number three, health. They practiced some form of health because they knew that this powered this. Mm -hmm. They needed to make sure they stayed in shape. So they all practiced something to do, either meditation or, or intermittent fasting or working out. They had something in their health schedule, mm -hmm. which was really, really important. Those are the top three. Okay, here we go. The, the next one and the last one's fascinating. The next one goes back to what I said earlier. They educated over entertained themselves. So they oh. didn't binge watch content or play video games, they were constantly educating themselves. What's next? What's important? They were using that as a tool to feed their brain the knowledge they needed to move forward. Like, for example, myself, I read five hours every day. Every day. I, I get so excited to do it, actually. And what I've done is I've made it to where I read to share. So that, that's and, amazing. And in the I you, you in the metal community, and I'm not sure if you go on the portal, you can see all those news links I put up there. I put 15 news links every day that I've researched and read, and I felt like these are important, but I made it to where that's my responsibility to share. And I've always create these type of connection points. So it, I, I'm responsible to educate. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's, it's amazing. And, and it's funny that you say that because we're very alike. I, I've been doing for the last 12 years. And even when I dropped out of college, I started doing reading and, and stuff for three to four hours every single day. I read three books a month. I do so many research. As soon as I, let's say, and, and about a lot of different topics, I just love to sponge knowledge and, and I love to share. And, and like you said, when you learn and you learn and it, it's nice, then you have multiple things to talk with people to connect. Yeah, you're a very diverse guy. And, and what I like about you is I could throw you in any political situation. You will not turn the other people off. You will listen, even though you may not uh, support their side, but you will still listen. And I really respect it. Okay, here we go. So those are the four. Again, let's just review them real quick, okay? Morning and evening routines, delayed gratification, health, and then educated over entertained. The last one was pretty fascinating. It was actually Elon Musk that really got me to see it. Every one of these people saw themselves as <laughs> uncommon, meaning they were different, not better, different. different. And Elon said, well, if I was common, then I would settle for average. I don't mm -hmm. want to be common. I want to be seen as different. So seeing yourself as in, is different or uncommon means you will settle, settle for something better. You mm -hmm. will never settle for the average. And that's really important. Said. That's a mindset. That's yeah. the mindset. And I right? love what you say, not better, different, because a lot of people think we think we're better when we say that we are different. Like, oh, I'm built different. I, I'm doing this for this purpose. Everybody has their own talent. It's just to seek out what it is and what you want to be different for. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the secret. So when you start to look at these five things, and by the way, anyone that's watching this or listening, in, start incorporating all of this. And you'll start to see yourself as un uncommon because you're doing all these other patterns now that are different than everybody else. And you'll see a different outcome in yourself. Yeah. And it's, you want to know what's the, the funny part is I have almost, I have five pillar in the road to abundance university, and it's almost the same as you said, they are not exactly the same name. Yeah. So the first one is like subconscious mind and, and rewiring mindset. I have one about um, health like workout and all the good stuff. I have one about the habits, the routine, what you need to do on your daily life. I have one that is um, everything about spirituality. Uh, let's let your like find your your no ego. Your why you're so like why you're so important. Become that important person. So it's right. like like 
it's funny that you you recap it. I'm, I'm like, that's exactly what I found to be abundant. That's my secret recipe, just in different teaching and words. But it's the same as you said. And I I think everybody that has been successful or, or abundant has those laid out. Like you need them. Yeah, but here's the thing. I'm a few years older and I'm, I'm this interview, I'm 56 right now. Okay. You're what, what 36? 30. <laughs> 30, 30, you're a kid, right? So I thought you were 20 years younger than me, even more. As you get older, you start to see patterns that you wish you would have done when you were younger. So you being 30, how exciting is that? Because you could implement these. So by the time you're my age, you're going to be insanely successful, in whatever that is. By the way, people don't equate success and money. Don't yeah. do that. Because if you're an incredible yogi, you may <laughs> never need to make money, right? It's, it's successful means you... You've learned so much that you share so much. That's yeah. to me what success is. And you're happily doing it. What, one, of, one of my favorite quotes about success was um, Tony Robbins, actually. He said that success is doing whatever you want, as much as you want, whenever you want, and, and, and with whom you want. So like you said, that's why I called, it, I called it abundance and not money. Because the thing for me is, some people maybe don't want money. Some people want to just be happy and abundant. And like you said, if you're a yogi, you could make million as a yogi. Don't get us wrong. But the thing is, you could just want the simple life and do as much yoga as you want with, as, with who you want, wherever you want in the world and just live that life. And for me, yep. you would be successful. Way more successful than doing a nine to five that you hate and having the Porsche and the $2 million house, but hating your life. For me, this is not success. This is a prison, just a different golden prison. You're right. You're right. I mean, I'm hoping I'm helping with, with, with some of my ideas to your community out there. I, I think that sure. <laughs> let's always make sure we're with accountable, genuine people that are about the good. You know, if, if you start to hang out and you and I have some friends, uh, similar friends, actually, that we know that they might be good people, but they do bad things. And be careful of that because unfortunately everything is contagious. Yeah. Divorce is contagious. If you're hanging out with four guys that are going through a divorce, you could probably go through a divorce. If you're hanging out with guys that gamble, you'll be doing it or they drink. Everything is contagious. So hang yeah. out with people that are doing good things so you could catch whatever they have and you could bring it into your life. And yeah, that's really and, important. And, and that's why metal was amazing for me because it was like, it's, it's hard. It was hard for me to be every day soaked in social media when I when I wanted to escape it. I, I've, I'm doing that for work. I don't want to talk about it when I'm off work. And then metal was like a different philosophy, different people sharing different knowledge. And, and, and also people like when you're telling me your success, I'm super happy for you. And actually, instead of being jealous that let's say you made a million in one day, I'm like, fuck, this is amazing. Now, how did you do it? What did you do? What can I learn? That's how people should see it. Abundance is everywhere on this planet. So I love seeing people succeed. I'll show you something kind of cool. So this is my, my, my rules in metal. Okay. Which I, if anyone wants to apply these themselves, the first thing in metal is contacts. It's open source Rolodex. We share all of our contacts all the time. Okay, that's the first thing. So, so contacts are something that's always really, really important. Okay, so contacts. The next one is credit. This is a big one. And I'm not talking about financial credit. I'm talking about where credit is due. If somebody did something, make sure you tell them that they did it. Don't ever steal or take someone else's credit. Mm. So making sure you share credit where credit is due and tell people, okay? It only builds like, hey, thanks a lot, Mike, man. I'm, I'm in great shape. Someone's gonna say, how did you get in such great shape? Oh, I did it. I worked it out. I go, no, Mike, Mike was my trainer. He got me in great shape. Now, what does, what's that do? It validates you, Mike, and it shows me that I have a relationship with you. It actually builds things up. When people steal credit, it doesn't help out. Next is, cash. Let me explain this. Pay for things. Don't expect things to be free. Because when people think it's for free, they're not paying the value of what it's worth. Right? And I hate when everybody wants a freebie. Oh, yeah, Mike's my friend. Mike, give it to me for free. No, no. Maybe Mike wants <clears throat> to give you a discount or Mike wants to yeah. give you extra avid value. But make sure you pay for things. 
the free mindset is a horrible mindset. Yeah. And then last is P, I know it's CCCP, is protect one another. <coughs> Always make sure you're bird dogging your, 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 your family and your friends. You're out there. If there's a bad person in the hen house, alert everybody. So these are my rules for the community. And I really, really profess them over and over again, making sure that these guys are always there doing that. Yeah. Because if we don't have guidelines, everyone kind of just runs amok. Yeah. And, and, and one that really struck me, like cash was a big thing for me back then, because yes, it's okay. Like you said, if you feel like, okay, Ken, I feel like I'm, I want to give you the course, then I do it, but don't expect people to give you shit for free. And I'm, I'm like, I'm going to this, um, the men of the star breeding retreat. And I was happy to, to send them $4,000 for the breeding retreat, because when you understand that money is energy and, 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 and you can't be like this with your energy, you have to expand and share it. There's abundance. I'm happy to pay you for your knowledge. If I don't have money and you're trying to help me, it's a different story. But if you have money and you can't afford it, or if you would be making excuse, I don't have enough money, but you want to buy all these other things. No invest in yourself and be aware that it has to be paid. And this, how I see it is you're telling the universe that you're committed and you're ready for this. Like if I get this program for free, I might not do it. I'm, I'm not sure if I pay for it. It's like, Hey life, I'm committed. Give me the entrance and boom, life open for you. So I, it's like amazing. I love it. So let's, let's go after one last thing. <laughs> and I want to talk about Another thing that I learned by interviewing all these individuals, and it Let's was go. Then, I, then I have three, four questions for you. And well, uh, yeah, I'm gonna let you do this, and I'll end it with this. Okay? okay, you'll love it. What are your questions? You go for it. Um, so living in Bali and and and, and traveling the world and uh, growing up, like being older and stuff, you meditate. Do you believe in spirituality? Do you believe that it did help you and it helps you to achieve happiness and fulfillment? pretty big question because the word spirituality is probably self-defined right yeah i would say like when i say spirituality no. it's the practice of gratitude meditation everything that's related to uh, for me spirituality is the word that i use to um those habits for those habits like the breathing pattern like meditation mindfulness um like that kind of stuff i think that if you don't implement those into your life, you're really missing out. And one thing you're missing out is, is truly enjoying the success and truly feeling the failure to get back to the success point. If you just overlook all of it, you're, you're, you're not doing those, those learning moments and those absorption moments. So yourself, the way you define spirituality, mandatory. So you can actually grow better and beyond where you're at today. Awesome. Quickly. Your top three book. <laughs> uh, I, right now, actually, is probably my favorite book I've ever read. Actually, it's called Life Force by Tony Robbins. Right, Tony Robbins. You see, oh. I didn't like it. Did you read it or did you listen to it? I just finished it. The problem for me, um, it was too much marketing. And uh, bio Without a doubt. is biohacking is, is, is my, um, there was a lot of good information. What I think was missing because it's my field of expertise, I felt that he was only pushing what he invested in. That's where I, I agree. A lot of Fountain marketing. health and all these things. I agree. So, but the thing is, there was a lot of thing missing. That's why I have a whole chapter on biohacking in my book. I wanted to see what Tony Robbins had to say. It's an amazing book for knowledge, but I feel he constrained to his um, investment. Okay. So I'm actually launching a company um with a lot of those things inside there so hearing it just reaffirmed that i'm going down the right path so maybe that's it i love atomic habits which i think is a great book if you haven't read that one atomic habits and there's an old old book called the way of the bull by leo viscalia you've never the heard way, of it the way of the bull this one i'll, I'll, I'll the I'll way of the bull it's a simple read and it's all around how love is in different cultures and how he That's studied good. love. I love, I love, love. Yeah. And as you know, being in metal, I want men to say they love each other comfortably yeah. without saying dude, man, or yo at the end. It's, I love you, Mike. I love you. It's not, I love you, dude. And I think love is really something that's underappreciated uh, when it comes to, to guys. 
Uh, yeah. And I think uh, it needs to be brought back properly. You had yeah, question. exactly. I, I share it. Um, Atomic Habit, amazing book. Um, what's your, like, when you feel overwhelmed, what do you do? And what's your best time management also? Like, I mean, you have interviewed a lot of people. What, what, what's your thing that you're like, this helped me to be the most successful, the most managed time. And if I feel overwhelmed, I do this. Uh, I go to the gym. <laughs> overwhelmed, the gym is my reset. Okay. It's my reset. And what I love, love doing, it's so crazy. I love doing cardio, but I like doing cardio with a movie or a show. So for example, if I'm, I'm watching a movie, I know that 40 minutes of a movie is going to get me to about 550 calories. I pop that up there and I could watch a movie in two days. So everyone goes, how do you watch all these movies? Because it's my cardio time, but it's my like zone out time. Um, I also love my family as you, before we even hit record, I was talking about how I talk to my kids. Yeah. I talk to my kids every day That's and amazing. I have a ve very, very, very healthy relationship with my partner. And it's, I have no stress from my relationship where all my past relationships stress was number one. And the reason why is because I put the relationship on top. And that's why I've learned to make sure I put it on the bottom. Yeah. And my relationship is what <clears throat> just is my beacon of bright hope all the time. I wouldn't, I would even go to say that no matter how hard you tried, if it's not the right partner, guys, it's not going to work. Like the partner that we both have, understand that we are men driven by work, by success, by this, by that. So they understand that right now, I'm going to be three hours in the office without talking to her. And I might spend all day without talking to her because I'm not going to answer my phone while I'm on podcast recording doing this, but she let me do me. And at the end, she's like, how's your day? And a lot Don't of people love that. are, yeah, it's when amazing. When you have the right partner, like my girl even says, right, go hang out with the guys. Yeah. You need that. Uh, there's no ego there. And I guess, again, me being much, much older, I've had so many bad relationships in between. Mm -hmm. So the minute you have the right one, you own that and you keep it. Yeah, totally. Like I'd, uh, all my exes cheated. I had so many bad relationships, like terrible story, but when you do have someone and and why i stayed single for six years is exactly because you need to to love yourself first and you need to find the person that's going to understand who you are you understand who she is and you 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 just grow together so that's amazing um uh if you if you want to tell me like an advice you would tell your younger self and uh, after that we're going to finish with a quick story where you thought this was like a failure, something that um, was bad, that became amazing. And why I like to do that, it's because I want to show people that a lot of people think when things happen like bankruptcy, this, 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 you got stolen money, whatever, that some good outcome came and life had something greater for you. Okay, so is that what you want to go after this is the story? Yeah, a quick story and, and before tell me or at the same time an advice you would tell your younger self. Regarding the younger self, I went through a pretty traumatic divorce and my kids were basically taken away from me during that process. Uh, now my ex-wife and I are very good friends because of my partner today, Sandy, has made that relationship become good. But in the process of that divorce, which was the most traumatic thing, was I started writing notes to my son in case I never got to see him or enjoy him at that period of time in his life. And so I would write the simplest things down that I thought were important being a father to the son. Like, for example, never shake another man's hand while sitting down. Always stand up. Something so simple, right? If you need to listen to music at the beach, you're going to the beach for the wrong reason. You know, little things like, I want to hear the waves. I want to hear nature. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. wrote all of these and they became something so powerful to me. And that separation of my family, my kids, I think has made my relationship with them so strong to where the negative became the positive. And, um, I don't have those type of kids where people go, oh my God, my kids get out of the house. I can't wait for them to be in the house. And they become such good friends. And um, 
yeah, the, the worst situation was I thought that was it. I'm never going to see him again. And now I see him all the time. So I, maybe not the right answer for you. But um, no, every it, answer is good. Like, I love that you're being vulnerable and that you're sharing a story. And like often people, they can't see like what's going to be a good outcome of those situations. So what I like to do then, like, we're, we're, can I end with another story? Yeah, yeah, yeah go was, ahead. Then we, okay. you want, I know you wanted to add that, this thing. That's why I said yeah, that. Yeah, I want to add this life. because I, I asked, I asked Elon what happens when he wants to go after a new industry or a company or whatever? What questions does he ask himself? And he had three questions. And I'm going to ask them to you also. So what, by the way, do you have a business you're about to start or a new venture you're about to do? Um, well, I'm doing the Road to Abundance University and I have some other abundance business related to it. Like, um, okay. I already have the whole business plan and stuff, but I'm, I'm curious. You, you, okay. You, uh... So the first question is, who are you? Meaning, who are you today? So for example, what's your favorite animal? Favorite animal? Uh-huh. Quickly, I, I mean, I really love dog. I would say like, I, I, I love dog. dolphin. I love, I love oh, like that's dolphin. That's funny. That's mine. Mine's dolphin. Is yours dolphin or dog? No, I mean, like, I, it's not like I can play with dolphin and stuff, but if I had an animal that I would be, I would be a dolphin. What are three adjectives that describe a dolphin? Smart, free, curious. So that's you. You just, you just described yourself in three words. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's what I do, yeah. So the first question you ask yourself is, who are you when you're about to tackle something? Who are you right now? Who are you? Are you going to be that smart, fun, curious person? Or are you slow, arduous, uh, painful? You know, what, what, what? So you have to understand where you're at first. Number two is, what is your superpowers of today? Like for me, I'm hyper connected to people. I'm probably one person away from any person in the world. Mm -hmm. Like I, you want me to get you to uh, uh, the president of North Korea, man. I, let me get you Kim Jong Un. I could probably get a hold of him, right? So my superpower, I'm highly connected. Okay, that's my superpower. So I know who I am today. This is what Elon does. I know what my superpower is. And then he asked this great question. What is your enemy? So you're creating this whole class, this whole university. What is the enemy of that? Why are you creating it? What are you trying to destroy? What, who, what is your Thanos on the other side? What is it for that, you? That's your question. Um, I would say the current educational system in terms of what people think success money and all that things will bring and chasing the wrong thing. That's my enemy. It's, I feel like we are being educated. That's why I also want to go in school and stuff. We are being taught the wrong value. Like it, it from young, we're like taught to chase, to do the rat race, to do this, to chase money because money is the American dream. It's going to bring you this car, this house, this, 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 this. And at the end of the day, that's not really what matter. And that's why I want to educate people and I want to give them the tools to be happy every day and feel fulfilled no matter what they decide to do. Got it. And I know everybody wants this question. I'm going to ask you one last question. What's your favorite body part on you? Your chest, your abs, your arms, your legs? Favorite body that? part on me? Uh, chest, probably. Your yeah. chest. <laughs> you, you could bounce them around, right? I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, 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 my chest. This is this is awesome, buddy. I really appreciate you giving me time today. Well, thanks a lot for coming. I wanted to do the interview for a while. I'm, I'm super grateful. Like I said, I love you. I'm, you're a, like, you're a really good friend to me. We, we talk a lot and we connected very, very um, quickly. And it, it was funny, like quick, quick story to, to end the thing is, uh, and I told Ken before, I was like, when I met him in Dubai, you know, Ken is this guy that is like, talking a lot, doing things. He know everyone and he's done everything. And you're like, he's either a fucking bullshit from LA or he's the real deal. And then Ken is like, okay, Mike, um, here's, we have a retreat. I normally invite nobody that is not from metal. I'll invite you and you have to pay. So I was like, 
okay, now I have to pay something. Um, it was, I think, 2000 or something with, with everything. And I was like, I'm going to invest $2,000 and I'm going to see if this guy is the person who he say he is or if he's a bullshitter. I was like, I'm going to take that leap of faith to really see because I really like you. But I was like, either either is the bullshit or either is the real deal. And then I came to the metal event. We had an amazing time. And since then we're just connected. And I, I really appreciate time every time. That was I a cool event. It. That was yeah, a cool event. It was, it was really cool. Like it was bounding with a lot of guys. Uh, we did some cowboy stuff. So it was, I love doing anything, bro. Like the, 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 the thing with the cow, the, the, with the, the pegging, I don't penning, know. Like, penning. Yeah. Was penning. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. But Thanks a lot for sharing all those those amazing stuff, and I will definitely um, get Sandy on 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 the podcast so she can connect with everything in terms of knowledge and uh, women and stuff, and and give her her share her information. So thanks a lot, and um, if you want to tell people like where they can find you, uh, oh, I'm easy. I'm easy. I, I live on Instagram or Twitter, Ken Radio, K E N R A D I O. And it's metal.men is where you can find us or metal.international. Send your men there, women. You want a better husband, father, brother, partner. We are there to make them great. Or guys, if you're looking for a community of heart-centered, just great men, that's where you go. So check yeah. it out. And it's it's amazing for business. It's amazing for everything. But you got to have the right reason and be a good person for sure. So thanks for thanks for joining me. I wish you an amazing day. Bye, everyone. Yeah.